Now, the work that I'm going to be presenting um, is going to focus uh, quite substantially on a platform. It's a platform that we introduced. It's a third generation platform that came out of our lab um, through the IEPI project. Um, uh, the latest version of it has been branded the Ethica or Ethica Health System. And this is a platform that, that uh, involves uh, smartphone apps coupled with web, uh, web applications to support study administration and for some studies, participant um, uh, capacity to view their own data or for their informal care networks, say a, a family of a child with developmental difficulties to view the information on that, on that child. So here, it's a platform that has apps for Android and iPhone. Uh, we'll also see the web app that accompanies this. Um, in most cases, we install our participant smartphones. Sometimes, on occasion, particularly for low socioeconomic status populations, we may give out smartphones to participants. We used to do this a lot more. We still will do it for, say, homeless population that we're working with, um, or individuals who are, um, who are from a background where they don't have access to smartphones. It offers um, data collection that goes on at the level of every few minutes. It grabs a bunch of data, as we'll see from a, a bunch of types of, of data sources. And periodically, it um, uh, transfers this information back to a database, um, which, can be scheduled, which can be placed in our lab or the lab of the person of, of the study that's running it. It collects diverse sensor modalities, but also context-triggered surveys and user-triggered surveys. So the, the key point here is this is not an app like um, most that you may download. It's an app that's highly configurable for each study to be configured in its own way, where for most studies, that configuration doesn't require custom programming. So for example, a study that's um, that's looking at uh, interaction of cigarettes and e-cigarettes might have a custom background, custom buttons for it. Um, but more deeply, it will have a set of its own questionnaires. Questions, frequency of issuing them, or triggering conditions. Um, perhaps in a, in a study, for example, where we're interested in the impact of social exposure to other smokers on smoke behavior, we might trigger a questionnaire when you're in the proximity or you just were in the proximity of another smoker. In other cases, you might trigger a questionnaire when you're in a park. Or other cases, you trigger a questionnaire for an individual when there's at least three others in the study nearby you and you want to have an understanding of your relationship to those parties. For, a, for example, as we did for a CDC-sponsored study of flu sequestration and its impact on flu transmission. So there's a certain sampling regimen where it measures data. Um, and um, all aspects of this um, uh, can evolve during the study. I, ex I say all but, but it's actually all in including the, the user interface. Individuals who are carrying this, and I'd invite you to get it on your phones in just a minute here, um, uh, by default, they're not collecting, it's not collecting data. They only collect data if they go into a study, which they agree to. They're presented with the information about the study. Typically, we go through a consent process, sometimes via video. And once they opt in explicitly to that study in an informed way, then the interface will be shown to them for that study. They might be in more than one at a time. They can pause data collection at any point through a menu on the application to indicate that they'd like privacy for a certain period of time. That allows them to opt out of data collection. For most studies, they can also simply at any point terminate involvement in the study, as we'll see. Um, this, this system has been around um, at some level in its various incarnations. Uh, our first smartphone-based work in the IEP project took place in 2000. Uh, 2010 or so, after a lot of discussion with our ethics boards. Um, and it's been used in, I'd say, probably now between 50 and 75 studies um, around the world, um, particularly uh, Europe, uh, US, Canada, and Australia are our, our, largest, um, our largest sets of, of, of collaborators. Um, now, 
I want to make clear, because this is going to be important for the conceptual model um, to have in mind as I introduce you to actual exposure to it. There's going to be a component of it that's running on your smartphone, okay? And that component is going to be quite survey, quite study specific. You might be able to switch between different studies for different studies with which you're associated, but each will have this custom look. And there's data collected on the smartphone, but that data that's being collected there doesn't in any way depend on you being online. Doesn't depend on you having a, a connection. Um, you could be uh, in an area underserved by 3G networks. You could be in the wilds of, of northern Saskatchewan. You could be um, in, in regions without data service at all or without Wi-Fi, and that's fine. The data will be collected on the phone. Now, when you connect to a network, and, and you can actually indicate um, the rules for this, um, uh, whether data is allowed to be transported over Wi-Fi or, or, or over a cell data connection um, and Wi-Fi, um, uh, the data will be opportunistically and without even the person being aware of it, um, transferred to the server, okay, to a server. This is a database. And um, at a technical level, it's what's called an OSQL database, which is a uh, a, a type of database that's highly suitable for handling very large volumes of, of big data, okay? And this database, um, by default, it lives in our lab, but some of our partners um, seek to have the database located instead at their institution, their home institution. Uh, for example, our work with um, some of our provincial ministries of health, um, uh, they, they need to have the data about their province stored within their province. And so they'll, they'll store it uh, there. The point is this data is read off the phone. So the phone at any one time typically just has, has information on the latest couple hours or minutes or days of data. If you're offline for a couple weeks, generally you can handle that. It will just keep on batching up the data and then do a big dump when, um, when you're connected again. All that upload is, is invisible to the user. It just occurs behind the scenes, catches, catch can. If it gets halfway through and it's cut off, that's fine. It'll just continue the next time. Um, this is a secure connection. The data is stored in a doubly encrypted fashion on the phones, and it is uploaded in an encrypted fashion through several types of encryption um, uh, to, to this database, which is further protected by firewall, et cetera. Now, it's not purely a one-way connection. There's also a backwards connection when we, for example, change the study configuration or we wish to send a particular user some piece of information, as we'll see, there's a way to do that, okay? So if you want to post a user an informational questionnaire or you want to, you want to encourage them in some way, there, there are ways of doing that. And as you change the survey um, uh, designs or the study configuration, you decide you don't want to, to ask them these questions quite as often, or you want to take this one survey and divide it into two as you, during the pilot, that, that can be all obtained by the devices in the field um, from, from, this, uh, from the database, okay? Now, occasionally, there'll also be updates to the app. So if bugs are fixed, or if um, there's, a, there's an extension to the app that adds a feature or what have you, support for Bluetooth beacons, for example. It can be automatically downloaded from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, which is how it's distributed. These, just like any app on, on smartphones for, uh, for Android or, or Apple um, iOS, um, it can be downloaded from these sites. Now, a key emphasis here is adaptivity, flexibility of changing it in the course of a deployment. Um, and updates the configuration, the, uh, the interface, and, um, and then uh, the app uh, when needed. Um, for most of our partners, the, the, the foremost area of, of need is in the area of having rich support for questionnaires, mm -hmm. survey instruments, um, ecological momentary assessments. For many of them, they're interested in what's called experience sampling, where you, you, you collect information from a person in an ecological context at a, um, 
uh, at a certain time um, that may be picked randomly or at fixed times of the day. You do it at you know, 8 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 4 p.m. perhaps. Um, you're asking about questions. In other cases, it's contextually triggered. Uh, we, we, we talked about that earlier. This uh, interface is defined by the user. We'll see where this is defined uh, through the website in just a few minutes. Through a drag and drop sort of mechanism, you compose your <coughs> questionnaires as part of defining the study. Um, you can go back and edit them and push those out. Um, the, the app will show them to the person at the times you've indicated or, or selected or according to the triggering conditions, um, where one of the triggering conditions may be they press a button and say, you know, I just removed a tick. And it calls up a questionnaire to ask you to photograph the tick and photograph, you know, where the, the site where it, it was from which it was removed. The type of data we get from these questionnaires includes naturally all the information from the questionnaire, um, which needs to be often interpreted in light of skip questions and all those sorts of normal patterns like typical questionnaire data. But it also includes the times where they answered the particular questions so you can get a sense of how long they spent on a particular question, whether they were just ripping through it in a way they were unlikely to be thinking about it or whether they filled them out with, with care. And it provides a lot of features that are, that are novel from a, a, a survey context. Um, for example, recording audio. Um, you can have audio questions where uh, you can give a long audio response or mixed audio and freeform text. So for those participants who prefer audio, they can do so. Others may want to type. Um, but we also have camera support and, and uh, video, support is, uh, video recording support is anticipated. The surveys can also show uh, pictures, um, and they can show video as part of it. Um, so, for example, informational videos um, in a given area. The person you may want the participants to see a video on a given topic related to the health behaviors that have been recorded, and you can show them that. There's a set of types of questionnaires we'll see: eligibility questionnaires. These these test whether a person is eligible to be part of the survey. It's, it's simply a screening mechanism that will govern whether or not they can, they're, they're suitable to enter the, the, the informed consent process. Um, there's study entry questionnaires, typically for baseline elicitation of demographics, history, um, et cetera. Um, there's study dropout questionnaires. So if somebody elects to drop out, you have the option of asking them some questions. And there's within study questionnaires. All these questionnaires are, are typically optional, um, but there are cases where, for example, if you don't fill out a study entry questionnaire, you're deregistered from the study. Um, it'll view it as you know you're, 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 you haven't you haven't truly um, expressed the uh, willingness to join the study, and obviously that would be specified as part of the consent process. Um, so, for example, a baseline survey questionnaire is often a bit longer. This one um, has 13 um, pages, where a page might be one question or three questions or what have you. And um, an individual could uh, fill them out. Um, there might also be these questionnaires that pop up. And what you'll see is on your device, um, some of you might want to uh, look at this, you may uh, have a notification which pops up and says, hey, you have, you have a, some surveys waiting. You'll also see it in your what's called the uh, menu bar for your for your phone at the top of the screen. If you have an iPhone or Android, you may be familiar with the little menu there, and it will say hey, you have a questionnaire waiting. Um, in other cases, people will press the, uh, the buttons, and in either case, you may have an ecological momentary assessment that pops up and asks questions. For a fair number of our studies, we use buttons that elicit information on a volunteer basis by the individual. Those are typically complemented by ecological momentary assessments that also probe whether any of these things happened recently or whether they'd like to indicate something. Because sometimes people forget to proactively indicate we want to double check it. So for example, we might have a button which allows people to share bar barriers to physical activity in their community. Um, or, or how it supports physical, uh, physical activity in their community. Um, these buttons can be pressed by the participant um, to report things. And 
Um, there's many contexts uh, we've worked in where these serve very different functions. An example for the HIV um, AIDS uh, uh, medication compliance is they might use a button to indicate when they're taking a pill. Um, in other cases, uh, they might uh, indicate when they're eating. Um, they might indicate when a tick has been removed. They might indicate when they're um, in a context where they feel there's a barrier to physical activity um, or where they've encountered some symptomology. They've encountered um, you know, feeling sick to their stomach or they're, or they're entering the water to surf because um, we're interested in understanding water exposure and highly credible gastrointestinal illness. Um, maybe people use it when measuring their insulin, and we might ask them to take a photo of their insulin capsule, or uh, when they've measured their blood glucose, and if it's not automatically recorded through Bluetooth, we ask them to take a photo of the reading on their blood glucometer, um, which, which records these things. Um, so these surveys um, that we ask, uh, they come in various forms, and the volunteered information um, can then be put into context. And this is a glimpse from the website we'll be seeing in just a few minutes. But um, fundamentally, it provides a way of browsing the information on what people reported where and to relate it to their answers. Um, uh, in other cases, some of our studies, um, this is work led by uh, Tarun Katapali at, at Regina Capel Health Region, some of these studies have gone the full loop in and, and allowing people to report things which are sh sort of, they're sharing about their community and we have websites which report back those things toward the community. So people can say, you know, this is a, a problem with, um, with my community being active um, or this is uh, support for, my, um, for being active in my community. And you could see um, pets <laughs> played a significant role in motivating physical activity in this particular community. Um, and the capacity to share this is not merely a nicety. Um, it actually gets people excited sometimes that they know that their voice is being heard and they have tangible things that they can show that, you know, yes, um, you know, what I contributed was listened to. It was shared with others. In fact, if you clicked on each of these, as we'll see, it will it'll give some explanatory text that they've uh, they've offered. Um, so this sort of uh, this for, sort of system can offer information on location through GPS or Wi-Fi uh, triangulation, physical activity. Uh, we have accelerometers comparable to the accelerometers in you know Fitbits and Actigraph accelerometer. Um, these are these are commodity devices that are built into your smartphones. As a, very two, as a routine component of smartphones these days. We can get um, spatial proximity of individuals to each other, other participants, uh, for studies where they've consented to this through things called Bluetooth, uh, which allows us to detect, um, detect the proximity of phones, how far apart they are. Um, we can also uh, collect information about uh, aspects of communication. Um, some studies we've looked at collecting information on browsing behavior um, and other studies on what apps people are using, for example, uh, via the phones. And um, these can give uh, additional insights. Um, now, um, in the wearable context, um, there's a wide variety of, of potential opportunities. Um, uh, one opportunity is to um, uh, to make use of uh, external devices that are that are um, uh, used together with apps that that jointly upload data with Ethica and then allow us to link the data after the fact. So, for example, Fitbit data linked to data from the smartphone or data from the Empatica watch to data from the smartphone to measure aspects of uh, electrodermal activity for giving the understanding of arousal or stress levels, um, heart rate data, data related to, um, uh, to heart rate variability, um, uh, although one has to be uh, cautious about using that with many other sensors to really make best sense of it. Um, uh, in other cases, um, the devices are used uh, in sort of a poor man's way, say a blood glucometer, um, while some allow us to directly read data um, from from apps. Um, others uh, 
other don't, and you can take a photo of that. You can take a photo of the blood glucometer and interpret it after the fact, or you take a photo of your um, um, of your uh, continuous glucose monitoring device. Um, and for many cases, we do offline sort of linking with data from the uh, from the smartphones. Um, wearables uh, and complementing our system with wearables has a number of trade-offs. On the advantages side, there's additional data streams. Uh, heart rate variability is of considerable interest, although um, difficult to, to do well with. Um, there's a lot of research um, that's needed and a lot of care that's needed to, to extract the best value from it. Electrodermal activity and heart rate, I would pose as, as three ones of, of interest to a lot of our uh, collaborators. You can have added precision. There's clear placement on the body. Think about a, a Fitbit watch that always goes in your wrist. You know exactly where it is compared to the smartphone, which is sometimes in your purse, sometimes in a pocket, sometimes on a table. Um, and uh, in some cases, um, the, uh, the sensors are, are even more reliable on the device um, uh, because of, uh, particularly because of that placement. Um, for many of these devices, think about a Fitbit, um, it's retained through a broader set of activities than a smartphone is. So when you go swimming or when you're exercising, um, uh, you're unlikely to be carrying your smartphone uh, while you're doing kickboxing. But, but you know, a, 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 a wristwatch or a, 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 a Fitbit might be something that you'd still have on even when you're, you're swimming lanes. The disadvantages here to coupling it with wearables are you've got battery worries. The device has to be charged. With a smartphone, it kind of comes with the territory. They're going to charge their smartphone. With a wearable, it's not so, uh, it, it's often an additional burden, seen as an additional burden. There's a cost side. Um, for a lot of our studies where we seek to enroll people at distance, um, uh, it's a barrier to have wearables because the wearables have to be provided to them. That somehow we have to get them the Fitbit or, or they need to obtain a Fitbit locally, which, which takes uh, efforts. Um, you need to motivate the wearing of it, um, which sometimes people feel an intrinsic drive because of the data they get out of it. They have skin in the game. But for many others, particularly for lower income people hoping to make ends meet, who don't really have a place for a Fitbit in their life, it might just be one more complication to be in this study that will actually hamper their likelihood of joining. Um, and uh, for ones where you actually hope to, to collect data together with Ethica or um, you know, as part of Ethica um, or where you have another app, there's often pairing requirements that can be frustrating to people, particularly if they have, have no technological um, past exposure. This need to pair with a device like many people routinely do for their, for their Bluetooth devices, it's quite foreign and it might be off-putting. Um, uh, but we have used um, these sorts of external devices for a wide variety of things. Weight scales, um, back in 2010, I think we did our first study with automatically measuring weight, weight of participants over time from Bluetooth-enabled scales. Aspects of their balance of real interest for falls and near falls. Heart rate and stress levels um, as, as evidenced by different sensors. Uh, aspects of sleep and quality of sleep. Um, hand use for washing, for smoking, for drinking. Um, there's the potential for measuring that if you've got accelerometry on the wrist, like there isn't with a, with a phone. And then proximity of participants to each other. Um, so we've used um, Ethica and its predecessors with a wide variety of, of different uh, watches and so on. Now, we're at a juncture where I've given you a lot of the basics. Um, I did ask for a, a longer session for this, and I'd like to use this opportunity to give you a glimpse of the system firsthand, if, if we could. Um, now, there's two components of this, and you can follow either or both, okay? The first component will be on a phone. And so if you don't, if you don't have a smartphone, um, uh, an, an iPhone or an Android phone, you might want to pull up to someone who does. Um, alternatively, I'll be describing it. Unfortunately, I 
I didn't have the presence of mind to enable a way that I could actually show it to you on my screen, but um, hopefully we can make do with what's in the room here. So we're gonna be looking at the app side of this uh, system. We are further going to look at the web side of it. And for those of you who have um, laptops or others, you may want to join that side too. Um, but I'll be walking you through on the screen the website interface in a way that I won't be able to with the, the smartphones. So for those who are interested in, in following this along, um, I would like you to go um, to the site for your phone where you download apps. For, for iOS or iPhones, it, it's going to be the Apple Store. Okay. For, uh, for Android devices, it, it'll be through the Play Store, um, which uh, on Android devices is, is shown with this little icon with kind of uh, a, a, tr a colorful triangle. Um, and if you go to the Play Store or the Apple Store, um, uh, what you can search for is two words. These are going to be most helpful. Uh, the first word is Ethica, E-T-H. ICA. So that's E T H I C A. Okay? Ethica Space Health. Okay? Um, you, you want that extra uh, component as well. And um, uh, depending what platform you're on, uh, you will probably see one app denoted with a puzzle piece. Yes. Do, do you see a puzzle piece? Ethica Medical. It says medical. Okay, uh, it, sh it should say Ethica data and it should show a little puzzle piece there. Do you see that? Yeah. Um, there, there may be other apps that, that also are related because there's, it turns out there's plugins to Ethica for things like browsing behavior or for recording app usage. But the one we want is just a plain old big puzzle piece. Yeah. Is it, is it Ethica Medical? Like that's mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so you'll want to go and install that. And, and on your particular platform, you may have gone through installation before. It's a standard install. And I want to emphasize, by doing this, you're not having any data collected directly. This is, you, you will then see the interface where people can opt into studies, OK? And it's when you opt into a study, it's at that point that you are consented to have any data collected. This is purely the platform which will enable you to get into studies. So uh, there's Ethica here, and you would do install for Ethica, okay? And what it should do is it should be downloading it, installing it, and then you'll want to open it, okay? There'll be, there'll be a thing to say open. And when you open it, you will see a general interface uh, for Ethica where it will walk you through just a, a few steps of how the interface looks, et cetera. So um, uh, there's going to be a, a step where it orients you to the interface. It says, like, uh, this is used to to pause the study or to join a study, et cetera. Do you see that? Do we need to sign up? OK, so we'll come to that in a minute. Um, we'll come to that in a minute. I, I just want to make sure the app gets downloaded. And, and then there's going to be the sign up the sign-up won't actually collect any data either. The sign-up is just so that it knows, for example, if you are someone who's already in a study, it will know to connect you with that, with that data, okay? So does everyone, have, uh, does everyone who has a phone and wants to follow have this uh, downloaded now? Okay, so, so the next step will be the following. And for those in the room, you have two choices as far as signing in or signing up, okay? And I'm going to show you the two options here. The, the first option is exactly what you're looking at. And you're, there's going to be a choice between sign in and sign up. Do you see that choice? Um, if this is your first time and you wanted to do it via that, that mechanism on the phone, you do sign up. Uh, you press sign up. It will ask for some additional information. You can use a fake email address. You could use a fake name. You, you don't need to actually give a real name. But for the sake of, of um, logging in again, you may, you may wish to use um, things that you can remember. Okay? Um, 
The other thing is if, if you use a real email address and you forget your password, it will send you the reset password. It's, it's like an old site in that regard. Um, so uh, you may wish to, to uh, opt in with that. The other method of opting in would actually be to go to the ethicadata.com website. This is a website, and this is the site we'll be going to to browse the data, to, to administer the studies. Okay? Now, within this website, um, uh, there's a mechanism for managing it, but on the far right-hand side, there's a thing that says log on. This is the other way that you could create an account. Okay? You can go say log in. And I made the mistake of already going and logging in, so uh, we'll have to wait with that. But there's, a, there's an interface there, I'll call it up here, um, uh, that would allow you to also create an account via that. And I'll show you what it looks like. It's like this. Oops. Oh, okay. Ethicadata.com. Um, and here we go. And you can do login. And here you will... Um, uh, you can you can do sign up. You could enter that same information. Now, this is the key thing I want to emphasize for you, ladies and gentlemen. Those in the room may wish to engage, for, for purposes of experimentation in this, in one of two ways or both of two ways. And I would encourage you to think about both of two ways. One is to to see the interface we'll be building in coming minutes. You probably want to be a participant. <coughs> And uh, you would enter a, a name and, and uh, an email address, uh, which could be, could be fake, and a, and a password for participant, okay? And, and uh, secondly, you may want to be a researcher. And you'll need to enter a different email address for the researcher. You want to be in a given capacity with a given email to log in. You're either a researcher or a participant. If you're doing it with the phone, that's automatically you're signing up that email address and that name as a participant, okay? Um, and uh, that's the one where you'll be enrolled as a participant. Through the website, you have a choice and, you, and you'll just need to use different addresses for both. So I have a participant email and I have a, a separate email for my researcher capacity. And when I want to log in, to the website to administer studies, I use my researcher one. When I want to um, enroll in a study, I use my participant one. Okay? Okay. So I'd like you to, through one of these two ways, either via the website or via the phone, for those who want to follow along, I'd like you to do that sign up and enter that information, recognizing it, it needn't be, um, it needn't be act, you know, the actual name or actual email. Just be sure to keep track which is participant, which is researcher. Yeah. I mean, while people are doing that, I'm just curious. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Are member do members get like selected for other studies like Mechanical Turk or any? There's no mechanism no. to mm -hmm. invite people to do it. Not not right now. Down the road, um, we are thinking we we are planning an option whereby people when they opt in, they can elect to be notified about other studies. Which in which they might be interested, right. in which are looking for recruiting people, and um, which might interest them, um, either because they feel it would be a good thing to do, or because it's collecting the same type of information and they're glad to provide that, or it's minimal burden, or what have you. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to want to create a participant, uh, for those who want to follow along, a participant account, um, and then um, uh, those of you who have a, a laptop might further want to create a researcher account, different email, um, so that you can see the, the sort of researcher interface, which is substantive and rich on its own. Okay, so if you, if you go and you do that sign up and you enter the participant information, you should come to a step-by-step -step exposure to sort of these are the features of Ethica. Does it show you a, a, a set of steps? Yeah says I do this for that, you know, click here for adding a study, joining a study, et cetera. Study. Sorry? It just says join study. That's yeah, right. okay. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, so, so you're all set with that um, uh, for the moment. What we're going to do now 
is I'm going to go walk you through the process of creating a study, okay? We're gonna create a study, and those of you who are using phones um, may want to then see that study interface, opt into it, and even submit things uh, to that study, and you, you can then, I'll show you how to leave the study, okay? Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is what we do. Um, in order to create a study, um, you would log in as a researcher. So once you signed in as a or signed up as a researcher with a certain account, you would then go back and log in, sign in with that account. Okay. Um, and by the way, this forgot your password. That's where it will be looking to use that email address to tell you this is your pass. You know, th th use this. Uh, you know, your password has been reset, um, et cetera. You can reset your password internally as well. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, researchers, when they log in, they go to uh, a site called um, the dashboard. It's located in the main site, um, uh, but it is located in an area that's called the dashboard on that site, okay? Um, and uh, that dashboard um, is, where you you administer surveys with which you're associated, okay? And we're going to jointly, um, together here, create a little study, okay? It's a little study which we will use on the smartphones to, um, to, to sort of uh, define an interface, define a, a simple survey, and define what types of data are collected. And I just want to walk you through this because it's a very simple step that any of you could undertake. Once you go can log in as a researcher, any of you could go create a study of this way. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a study, okay? Um, and it's going to ask, in order to create a study for me, a study is going to be a, um, a definition of study design, which I need to specify. And then it's going to give me a study ID, which would allow phones to participate in that study. Okay, that's that's the plan here. So I'm going to create a little study here. I will say um, UCLA. Um, uh, you know, uh, maybe it will be a falls uh, study. Okay, and uh, there's a little study description. Uh, this needs to be. You know, so you know, we'll say uh, this. This is a study of falls. Uh, and near near falls um, uh, 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 participants um, uh, are expected to be healthy uh, uh, mature adults or older adults um, uh, um, uh, etc okay and the institution involved I'll say is UCLA okay um, and uh, then it allows me to specify some basic information about the study design. Okay, so the first question is, okay, how long is this study gonna run? And from, from what point and to what point? Um, by default, it's a week beginning today. I can say it's an open-ended study um, where it will <laughs> simply start today and go as, as long as, as needed, okay? Um, either one is an option. I'll, I'll set it to just uh, go, uh, go for a week here. Um, now we have to set the participant duration. It can either be the same as the study. They can go as long as the study's around, or you know, each participant might be enrolled for a certain fixed number of days. Maybe each participant is enrolled for three days in the study. Maybe each participant is enrolled for a year you know, in a study that's open-ended. Um, we have a total uh, a target population size of participants. You know, I'll, I might say 200. Um, and then there's a question for enrollment type. Um, who's allowed to register this? Um, is it anyone with a link can register? Is there a special code that's needed to register beyond the study ID? Is there a certain in invitation-based code that you send out that says, you know, you're invited so we know this person is eligible, um, that we've invited them? Or is it uh, a closed study where um, it's managed in a, in a different means yet? I'm going to say it's a public study so that people here could enroll. Okay. Now, now we get into the very specific 
definition of the data to be collected. So remember, we're specifying a study design. We specified some general features. But a key set of elements yet to be specified is what information is being collected. And that broadly is composed of three types of information. One is, is data collected automatically by the phone, things like accelerometer data, step counts, uh, information about people's location or contact patterns, um, the, the, the distance between them and their service dog as measured through Bluetooth. Um, uh, these, these are automatically collected data. The person doesn't have to be involved with it. It gets automatically collected. They can opt out. They can pause it. But it's collected behind the scenes. A second type of data is survey data, where it questions asked of them. And the third type is a subset of that where they can indicate things with buttons. I'm going to add data sources because this is used for all three types. Okay, So we're going to say add new data source. And it's going to ask us, what data do we want to collect? Is it uh, Bluetooth data? Um, is it Bluetooth beacon data? This, is, this would be used, for example, for the study with veterans with PTSD. We put Bluetooth beacons on the dog's collars. And, and so we can measure how far they are away from, from those dogs. So um, I might be interested in app use or screen state. Um, is, the, is the screen on? Um, how much screen time is a child getting? I'll say screen state. And they'll ask, is it mandatory? Or could someone opt out of that particular uh, sensor? Um, uh, I'll say, uh, yes, yes, for now. Um, I'll add a new data source here. Maybe we'll want to record uh, uh, aspects of their location um, uh, with uh, GPS, uh, for example. Maybe we're interested in screen state because we want to know, is it possible a fall was related to them using the phone? Can you imagine that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hear telling laughs. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, all too common, I think. Maybe we're interested where the fall took place. So we're interested in GPS. You know, we, we want to know w where they fell down because we want to know maybe there's hot spots of falls that we don't know about that no, no one person knows about. But if you total up data from across many people, you start to see, oh, that's a hot spot. Many people are falling there. They each don't know each other's falling, but that's an area of risk because of how the water is siphoned off or, or because of the slippery surfaces, because of ice, or, or because of um, the slope surface or what have you. Um, OK, so maybe we're also interested in um, accelerometer, um, knowing something about um, uh, when they fall. Maybe we could recognize cases of possible near falls and use it to trigger a survey, in fact. Um, perhaps we're further interested in, uh, in an aspect of step counts, because we're interested in knowing, were they running prior to this, or you know, moving very quickly, or, or what have you? Um, uh, is, it, is it an aspect of, of uh, its hurried movement that might, that might play a role? And then finally, for most studies, the, the big central one of great interest is survey responses, because we're interested in eliciting information from them, either via buttons or via these experience sampling to, to elicit whether or not um, they, um, um, for example, they had certain risk factors in place to elicit r uh, reporting of symptoms, uh, exposures, et cetera. So we'll say um, add. Okay, so we've just defined, this is the sort of third component here. We had the description, we specified the enrollment protocol, and then we have the, uh, the data sources. And we're going to finish it and say next, okay. Now, is time just automatically included, so you don't have to? Right, time, time is, is time used is for is. all, and who, who, who's recording that information. Right. Okay. So it's all cross-linked by time and participant. Um, but then we have these additional forms of information. Now, there's a few additional components here. We, we want to ask, should we allow dropout through the app? Most certainly. <laughs> we don't want to trap anyone here <laughs> in the app. Um, you can always uninstall the app, of course. But here, we want to allow people to drop out of the study at will. And I'm tempted to put something in, but time is short. And so I'm not going to 
put in an image here. Okay, this this would be where we could put a custom image. You know, we we want an image of uh, of uh, the UCLA logo, or we want an image of um, uh, of of LA as viewed from UCLA or something. So we'll we'll just uh, go light on that. We'll just leave the default one. And I'm going to say create study. Now that create study is doing a lot of work behind the scenes. It's actually creating a large database, which I could then access as the creator of the study. It's setting up all the data structures to, to uh, keep track of this information, the rules by which people are involved and so on, creating a study code. Now, it tells me, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's created the study. Do I want to define surveys now? And I'll say yes. I, I don't have to. But it, here I, I'd like to add a survey because this is often of central interest to the people I'm, I'm dealing with. So it's saying, okay, look, you haven't defined any surveys. Click, click below here to, to add one. By the way, I could get to the same type of mechanism by going over to survey. So I'm going to say add a survey, okay? So it's going to take me to what's called the survey editor, okay? Um, and here I'm going to, um, to be able to define a survey instrument and a questionnaire. So I'm going to say um, fall reporting, okay, or, or report fall. Okay, that's going to be the name of, of this. It's going to be to report it. Um, this survey will allow people to report uh, occurrence uh, of a fall and associated uh, risk factors. So maybe they'll we'll ask them, you know, were they carrying something? Um, uh, was it, we'll ask them to take a photo of it. That would all be part of this survey. Um, now, it's going to ask us, do you remember I said there's four types of, 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 of uh, survey instruments that are used? Here are the four types. Eligibility, a baseline or study entry. Generic, which is sort of an ongoing one typically. It's, it's, it's not marked by any particular area. And then um, exit study, um, so that would be for dropping out. So here we're going to ask about, uh, we're going to put in place uh, a generic one, one that will be asked on an ongoing basis or available on an ongoing basis. And we go down here and we can see, okay, should this be triggered by a schedule? Is it like an experience sampling where we want a certain time schedule for it? Uh, maybe it's, it's uh, Poisson arrivals, a certain random chance per hour. Maybe it's instead um, certain times of day. Do we want it user triggered or advanced trigger? I'm going to set this one to be user triggered, okay? So they're reporting a fall. We probably will be advised to, uh, well advised to set up a, a one that occasionally asks, did you fall in the last hour? Um, uh, and if time allows, we might get to that. So here's a user triggered one. And then we have to say, what's the button called? Like, what, what do we want the button to say? So I'm going to say, um, um, you know, I just uh, or uh, I I fell um, um, or I have fallen let's 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 use the the uh, what is it past perfect or what have you okay um, so I have fallen um, uh, okay so here ladies and gentlemen you'll notice that we can have some other settings like should we capture the location where this was filled out um, should we allow them to see their past responses to the survey, um, uh, and should we show them the progress through the survey? So if it's multiple pages, they have a sense of how much more do I have to go, you know, till this is done. Um, we'll, we'll say show progress, um, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll leave the, the other two. Well, maybe we'll say capture location, sure, okay. Um, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to define the questions in the survey. After all, we need to ask them something. So they're going to press this button that says, I have fallen. And that's going to summarize, that's going to bring up the survey. What needs to be on the questions of that survey? Well, I, I just went and I, I clicked on page one. And it's giving me some choices here for what I can specify, OK, um, or what, what I listed. And you'll notice that this is a, a survey editor in the same way that, uh, that um, Google Forms use. I think SurveyMonkey has a similar design where you have a drag and drop interface. And you're going to basically drag in to one or more pages here um, uh, information um, that's going to define the questions on a page. And you can add more pages here so that they appear separately 
um, uh, using this, uh, this edge page. So what I'm going to drag in, for example, is, um, uh, is, is that maybe I'll drag in, instead of that, I'll drag in a multiple choice. Here we go, okay? Um, and so uh, dragging this in, I might say, uh, uh, please um, indicate um, uh, which of the following um, uh, uh, applied uh, before your fall. Um, you know, and maybe I'll, I'll ask questions, you know, uh, I was carrying something, um, um, you know, uh, another one might be, um, uh, texting. sorry, I was texting, I was texting. <laughs> good, uh, good, I'm going to add an answer, um, <laughs> you know, um, uh, I, um, yeah, I was reaching for something, good, um, uh, for something, um, and and then maybe I'll have an other category, okay, um, uh, where they can they can indicate uh, uh, which of the following, you know, maybe I'll say I, I don't like to say risk factor that would not be familiar. The following um, uh, factors contributed uh, to your fall, something like that. Um, so maybe maybe that's something I would I would include, and then maybe I'll have a from over here. You can see there's a wide variety of question types: freeform text, um, ask them to to give a visual analog scale or images. Maybe what I'll do is give them a choice of answering here in audio or text. Okay, so they can they can answer the other here. Um, in uh, you know, so this will say please uh, record. Um, the other factor um, you believe, or other factors, um, or the other factors, uh, other factors um, you believe uh, contributed to your fall, or something like that. Now this, by default, it will not be enabled. We will only enable it when we say other here, okay? So you'll notice here that we can specify for that answer, I can specify here the list of the questions to enable or disable if I fill that out. So if I check other, I will say question two gets enabled, okay? Um, and uh, this is going to then um, allow this question to be initially hidden, but then it will be shown. Okay, now, um, uh, I might then want to have a separate page, okay? I'm going to have a, another page where um, I'm going to edit below this. And this page is going to ask them to do something different. I'm going to ask them here, uh, could they uh, record? So, um, uh, could you, um, uh, is, um, are you uh, able to take a photo uh, of where you fell, um, and I'll give two choices, uh, yes and no, right? Yes, here, and, uh, and no. And fundamentally, if they say yes, then maybe what I'll do is I'll enable a question which uh, allows them to take a photo here, and that's, that's what's called an image question, okay? So, here, um, we're going to have, uh, if they say yes, we will enable question four. Um, and in question four, it will be by default not enabled, okay? So now our questionnaire has two pages. The advantage of, that page, of those two pages is um, that they're not overwhelmed by a large number of questions at once. Um, and often we have branching questionnaires where a large number of the pages never, they never need to get to because they're not relevant for them. They're not the right sex or gender of the right risk factors and so they don't, they don't record it. In some cases we'll use aspects of the data we got from their baseline questionnaire to determine which pages are shown. In other cases we'll do variable substitution based on information they asked you know, for about their children, their various children, we might ask questions for each of the children in here in a looping type construct um, with the names of the children asked about, et cetera. 
Um, in any case, so we've just defined a, a little survey, and I think you get the basic idea. A key point here is that there's these multimedia questions. We can record audio, we can record audio as a bit of a response or as a more general mechanism allowing them to record a baby's crying, for example. We can have barcodes, uh, scan barcodes to be able to record you know, uh, information on the product you're using. There's dates, a calendar for dates to elicit dates, say a birth date. Um, there's also special things for body weight, for example, or mass, where we can ask about, you can use kilograms or pounds, um, or where height, you can specify it in inches or, or feet and inches or, or centimeters, et cetera. So we've tried to build uh, a lot of these um, question, question types in ways that are responsive to health needs. Now, I'd like to now, uh, having defined this, you notice it says that I have all changes uh, saved. Um, I can say, okay, uh, invalidate, and it will say, you'll notice that, um, uh, that the attribute of this is invalid. So it says the value should be similar to one, two, three, where the number refers to a question. So we have in, in this uh, a mechanism for double checking your survey for consistency. So if we go back and look, it's telling me I filled in Q2, but it should have just been two um, as the question to be enabled. Similarly, when this guy, I filled it in, I said Q4, it should be this. I validate it and it says it's validated. Okay, it's cross-checked it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can publish it. Now by publishing it, then it will actually go push it out in a way that participants can get it. So now it's published. So we have not only defined it, we've made it available. So let's go see and, and get in and go see it on the on the device. So I'm going to go back. I'm, I'm done defining this uh, this survey. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go find the the study ID associated with this. Okay, so. I go to the basics area here. You'll notice it set up for me this whole area here. And, and you notice it's saying that this study code is 310, okay? Um, alternatively, we could provide people with a URL that links there. So if you were to go, and you're, you're welcome to do this or not, if you were to go to your, to your phone and, and you were to say join study, and I were to say I'm going to join 310, Okay. That's the study code. By doing this, it is then going to ask or tell me about this study. It's going to say, you know, this study involves recording this information. These are the sponsors of it. It's running um, uh, for this length of time. You'll notice for me, I say my length is three days as a participant. So it's saying for me, it runs December 13th through, through 16th even though the total study duration is longer. Um, and it's telling me this is the type of information it's gathering. Do I want to cancel or do I want to register for it? Normally we have a separate, more involved video for informed consent where we talk with them about their rights as participants to withdraw. We talk with them about how the information will be used and, and the types of insights, the type of risks, et cetera. I'm going to say register here. And by registering, it's going to then pull up the interface for me on the phone, okay? Where it says, it gives information about the study. I can go look at that information. Um, I can go look at the data sources, but I can also see this button. And by clicking that button, then I'll see the survey that I created. I'll see this information. I'll say, yes, I was carrying something. I was texting. And I'll say other. You know, um, I was teaching. Um, <laughs> it doesn't, it's not obvious that you click, I have fallen. Is there a way to, I mean, it just, I'm just wondering if somebody got this. Right. So that's. So it have something to say, please click it. Yeah, that would be the nice to, to show that the first time. It's a good point. Just like when you first join the study, it walks you through things. Right. It'd be nice to be able to show that. I'll, I'll see if I can get that on the queue. Okay. So. So here I said that I, I had these risk factors um, and, uh, and I was teaching. I'll say next. That gives me to the next page. I say, am I able to take a photo? 
I say yes, <laughs> and now it's saying, okay, take a photo of it, okay? And I'll take a photo of this dimly lit area <laughs> of where I tripped over the cord. Um, okay, um, so May's warnings were, were timely. She had warned me about tripping as I go back and forth. Uh, she knows my teaching style. And, and so I have a photo now, which I can either choose to approve or not, and I'm going to say submit, um, and I'm going to say, now it actually tells me, well, for my other studies, I have further surveys to fill out, and I said, no, not, not right now, thanks. Um, okay, so, so I just submitted this. Now, in the app, if you go up and you look, you'll notice that you can get information on your various studies. There's also a settings area where you can tell it to, um, uh, to engage in different types of behavior. For example, do you only want it to upload when charging? Do you want to um, sync the data at a certain point? Do you want a rapid upload, et cetera, okay? And those are, those are optional, but they provide extra settings. Um, you can also, uh, through the app, through that upper left menu, you can pause participation, and that will uh, allow you to stop participating. Now, now we just uh, engaged in that. Now, I'd like to go highlight, and this is just in the final remarks here, if we were to go look on this um, device here, we could go look at, for example, participation. And um, here with participation, we can actually see who's participating. We could see, wow, there's actually quite a few people <laughs> participating. Um, um, several people have, sub I mean, there's someone submitted four surveys. Um, wow. It's, not quite Olympics, but uh, it's, it's, that, that took some fancy finger work. Um, uh, you could see also this indicates, okay, you know, who has their GPS on, who has it turned off, whether accelerometer data has been received, when was the last time they were seen, when did they join, um, and when's their last day of operation, et cetera. More than that, um, we could go look here at, for example, um, this is uh, survey session, so this is particularly information with respect to their answering of, of various surveys uh, as part of this, which gives a sense of sort of who was given what surveys for what, for what times and, and how were they uh, resolved, okay? So we might select, for example, certain participants here, um, and, or maybe I'll say all participants, and I'll say sure, all, all uh, things, and I will say, um, let's say uh, today, and I'll say go, and we could see information with respect to uh, sort of their, their surveys that they contributed. Um, more than that, um, as we'll see, we can go and inspect uh, their information for each of the surveys that they contributed. So in short, we could ask, okay, um, what, what did they show? This is taking a bit of time to summarize it, so I, I think I'll just go over and, and go directly to that because time is short. I will again say all participants. I will show this. And this is going to summarize for me the, the information shown by various participants. So I see that there's a wide variety of fall risk locations. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, and there's the biggest risk of all. Um, he's, he's up there. Um, um, and, you know, uh, people contributed um, many other types of things, um, included caring things. We could also go look at where people filled them out. Um, uh, here for this particular study, you know, where did they in fact uh, report these things? Okay, um, it says, okay, that's interesting. Um, uh, there were some that didn't have GPS information, but there's a suspiciously high number in <laughs> Los Angeles. Um, uh, and, and, oh my gosh, um, okay, that's, that's an interesting one. Um, Okay, so it's attributing, um, uh, we'd have to look at if that's G GPS uh, information. And you can see there's a certain amount of GPS variability here. Um, uh, so it's, it, it's, but there's nine right here. Um, and I, does this look right in terms, we're just off Charles E. Young Drive? We're in that blue. 
Okay, so we're we're in there. One of them it got bang on, and and then several of them it it attributed to sort of being right in this quadrant um, in terms of the responses. Okay, um, and there he is again. That's the <laughs> you know you, you chalk it up uh, low lighting conditions, slippery surfaces, slopes, and and someone like that. Um, <laughs> that that will do you in. So. Um, We've just seen some aspects of this. There's lots of components. I haven't had time to demo. We have heat maps about where people are spending time. There's a uh, capacity for this information to be, um, to be grabbed directly, but there's, uh, there's also capacity to download the information, okay? Um, and uh, you can go and from the sensor data here, you can do raw data downloads. Um, you can also ask for geolocated data to get kind of a, a map of where I've been over time for a particular participant. You can also get a heat map for one or more participants as to where they're spending their time. So you know, okay, they're spending their time mostly in this area, but they occasionally go, you know, a um, couple blocks over to that region. The raw data download gives you the ability to download data as CSV files. Um, for opening, so I can go, you know, download my GPS information, um, and it will produce a CSV files, um, and it will provide me a link where I could go download it as a zipped uh, CSV. But for a lot of the work that we conduct with partners, um, they they use this type of information, or there's information on the survey area to, to do analysis of survey results. So these are in the responses. You'll notice there's a download capacity here. You can do download as CSV or in another format called JSON. Alternatively, um, when they want to do more sophisticated analysis, they'll either download it as we just saw it with that separate download area for the raw data, or they'll, they'll choose to connect directly to the database using tools or they'll they'll work with us as computer scientists who, who are trained in big data methods and specialize in that to work with them to analyze custom to do custom analyses which combine sensor data on the one hand um, say where people are spending time or their level of physical activity or, or who they're with on the one hand with the, the sensor responses um, and so we, we pursue a lot of a lot of work that leverages both those in a given um, uh, in, a, in a given analysis or, or or investigation. So this is a glimpse of the system. It's a big system. Um, I know it's a lot of information, but I hope it provides you with some understanding of, of sort of state of the art with respect to this. For those who would like to uh, uninstall, you can uninstall the app. You can also go uh, to the app, um, to that screen for the study. You can do about study and you'll see study settings and you can do drop out of study. If you just want to drop out of the study, create your own. Instead, as a, uh, by signing up as a researcher, you can create your own and just drop out of this one because we don't need to, um, uh, to keep it going. You could, you could do that there. If anyone is interested in playing around and seeing this particular data from a research standpoint, send me mail, I'll give you a card, and I can add you um, to the interface here. Um, I can add you as a researcher associated with this study. Um, uh, I can go down here, and if you were to tell me, you know, the account you used, the, the email you used as a researcher to sign up, then I could enter that here and add, and I could add you in, so you could see all the information related to this study, how we define the surveys, how the data that's come in, all that sort of stuff, okay? It's a bit of a glimpse. Most studies need no programming. Occasionally, people want programming for custom-triggered, uh, custom-triggered surveys, or they'll want programming associated with new needs, like to partner with a smartwatch, or they want a custom branded skin for the app where beneath the surface it's the same app collecting data, issuing surveys, but it has a unique look to it. it it's branded. It's, it doesn't require the person to join a study. Just by downloading the app, they're in the study. Um, 
or they go through a consent and then they're in the study. So the point is, um, those sort of things require more programming. And quite, quite often we get you know, requests like, can you add in video recording? Or could you add in the ability to show videos? Could you add in something so people can pick from pictures rather than simply from text? Quite a few of those have been done or on the docket, but those are the sort of things which require some software development and, um, and which typically require a little bit of, of extra, um, uh, extra tr cost associated with that. Hope this has been useful. Um, and um, it's an honor to have uh, been able to share this with you. Thanks very much. Thank you. And for anyone who uh, came late, I think Nate still has time to yep. set up meetings, yep. possibly, yep. next couple of days. So it may have to leave. But if you email May or Malia Lohr, it says to PR. But May Wong is probably the person who signed up. Thanks very much again. Sorry? Um, I think I think I'm scheduled for something called lunch now. That's um, and, and it, it seems to be in close proximity. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much, folks. Um, if anyone's interested, I will be. Um, I have recorded this, um, and we'll be uh, posting it to YouTube if you want to see any of what I did, if you felt I went through quickly through something, I'll be posting it to YouTube as I did yesterday's talk. Thanks very much.